Linux desktop environments vary in their design, features, and customization options. We'll be looking at the XFCE variant today, known as the XForms Common Environment. And this aims to be lightweight and prepackaged software, fast and very low on system resources, while still at the same time being visually appealing and user-friendly. Now, that sounds difficult, but Linux desktop environments pull this off a lot easier than you might think, and with much lower hardware requirements. You can easily run a desktop environment like this on hardware from 5 to 10 or even more years ago. So with that, let's jump in. Okay, so now at the top left, we can select through all of our system applications and tools. And you'll find your internet browser accessible here, and various settings to modify or inspect the operating system itself. There's also enough baked in open source software like Office tools to perform any basic Office administrative needs or just consume media. Next, we have our places area, which are essentially folders and network locations that our current user can access. Let's go and check out the home folder now. Now what just popped up is essentially a file explorer application, very similar to what we've seen inside of Windows where you can navigate to various folders on the disk and look around. In this top right area, we can change our preferences to list views and icon views if we'd like, and we can actually go ahead and search for files within that little magnifying lens. Let's go ahead and click on that now, and let's just search for some file or something along that nature. And no results found, obviously, it doesn't exist, but that's how you would search for files. Over here, the trash can, kind of like the recycle bin of Windows, this is where all your deleted files go. And if we want to expand our view, we can double click that title bar in the top, that little gray banner, and then double click it again to minimize it. If we want to close any of our windows, we can just hit that little X button at the top right, very similarly to Windows, and close our application. And next, let's look at the settings. We can find that inside of System Tools, Preferences, and the Settings application itself. And this is where we can change our display options, our backgrounds, notifications, sound, power options, you name it, printers, and just about anything related to how the system is desired to be interacted with by you. Selecting applications is where we can actually see our installed software, and this is where we can adjust basic options like notifications and default file types that these applications are supposed to open up with. If you look at this little text editor here, we can see that its default handlers are set to text files, and that's plain text documents. This is also where we can interact with our user accounts on the operating system itself. If we select users, we can see our account, Ubuntu, but we can't do anything just yet because we're not actually logged in with an administrator account to perform any type of user administration. And if we wanted to change our default applications, so let's say we wanted a different web browser instead of Firefox by default, we can change that over here in default applications. And if we wanted to get a bit of an idea about what exactly is our hardware and software configuration, we can find that inside of the about section. And the About section actually contains the Software Updates menu. And this area over here is where we can configure how we want to update our Linux environment. We can change where we download our updates from, look at various types of update settings, if we want it daily or weekly. This is where we would manage all of that. Another important area would be the network settings. And if we select that tab, we can actually set up our VPN over here or proxy our traffic through another medium. And finally, if we're not actually sure what we can find in the settings, we can actually just select a little magnifying lens at the top left and search for it directly. And if it does exist, it will take us to that menu option. And really, that's it. I mean, Linux kind of gets a bit of a bad rap of this foreign operating system that is maybe hard to use at first, but it's come a long way. And the GUI, as you can see, is really straightforward. It's pretty similar to Mac and Windows in a lot of ways, and just Clicking and browsing around is set up to be really simple and straightforward for you to work with. And most importantly, now that we know our way around, we can actually start using the operating system. And that's what we're going to do in the next lab. See you there.